Good morning, KW Prosperity. It is Matt and Mary Beth with you again today. It is Thursday, April 30th, last day of April. Um, I'm kind wow, of, yeah, we I'm have kind of been in the full month. Yes. What? I'm kind of excited to move into May, kind of get, get rid of April. Let's move into May on to bigger, better things. Um, one thing in May that I do want to bring up, we talked about this uh, with uh, Bill and Ron earlier, is just how excited we are. I'm so excited. I'm even wearing a shirt for Bold. Um, we have Bold Pivot coming your way starting next Tuesday. Yes. Bold, bold, bold. You should do the Bold song. That would be exciting for our audience. <laughs> we, will. We, we, will, we will. We'll bring it on. next On Monday, we are going to bring it on. Um, Matt, to that point is Bold Pivot is exciting. Yeah. It is very affordable. And I believe it's what every single one of our agents should be signing up for. It's $99. We're going to be coming out with some really amazing incentives to get yourself registered. You'll yeah. see that from us, I would say, first thing tomorrow. Yeah. And Matt and I are both signed up for it. And one other thing I want to mention is because some people have some questions around how different will this be and what is the setup guys i would honestly say there's times where at the 7.99 mark i say you can't afford to not be able to afford this yeah. and and right now at 99 dollars, some of us may be saying that's a challenge i don't have 99 dollars um i would challenge you and i would ask you to find that 99 dollars yeah. Somebody is willing to invest in you. If you tell them that you're willing to invest in yourself, if you really, really don't have it, call me. Yeah. And the other thing is, if you just cut out some little, little expenses, you probably can find it. But so what is Bold Pivot? Bold Pivot is going to be with, I believe, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's eight of the top head coaches. Yep. They're all head coaches, which is, I don't want to say differentiating between just a regular coach but a head coach is really the top in our industry and in our field to teach yeah. bold. So they're going to be the best of the best. Yeah. So they actually coach the coaches. And, yep. and so you're going to get the best of the best. There's eight of them. It's going to be set up. It's going to, it's basically going to be the largest real estate co conference ever, yep. ever in the planet earth. Um, I believe they are looking to register 20,000. I, I think they're going to surpass 20. 20 yeah, yeah. I think they're going to surpass it. So uh i if you have any questions on bold pivot please ask us yep. we'll be there with you on this journey but if anything guys if anything we've talked about how scheduling is important and yep. keeping your activities consistently generating consistently is always important and through this time it's even more important yep. so i urge you challenge me come in call me and tell me why you're not going to sign up so yep. that i could at least get you to see things a little differently. I, I, I look forward to seeing you in bold and um, thanks for bringing yeah. that up, Matt. And last thing I'm going to say to that is uh, I saw on Facebook and I'd actually, I was texting with Kristen Cooper uh, before our call uh, and she was saying that she had just signed up for bold pivot. So, yes. um, you know, and I, she I said, yes, I'm week, in. yes, she's in. And, and last week I know I saw um, Bill Roberts had signed up. Rihanna had signed up. We had about close to 10, 10 people signed up. I just registered yesterday. I know you were just registering. So, um, you know, for those of you who- Our like goal is how many? 65%. 100 agents, 100 yeah. agents. If we can get 100 agents, we're also gonna have another incentive for you to invite somebody who's not with KW because this is not about Keller Williams. This is about pivoting through a shift that is, is relevant to anybody in our market. Uh, also, we have insurance agents, mortgage representatives, all different types of lead generation type of businesses are also joining Bold. So I think we have Courtney's watching, uh, Jesse's watching, Arthur, Kristen, she's registered, Kieran, everybody else get registered. Yep. All right, let's move on. Okay, so as we move into the MREA uh, material, uh, we left off yesterday with finishing up the three L's, so leads, listings, and leverage. And that's going to be something you're going to hear us say a lot through uh, the course of the entire book. Uh, yet we're shifting gears to really the final stage of the think a million piece before we transition into the earn a million piece. Uh, the last part of the think a million is 
now that you have the mindset, now that you understand what your 20% activity should be, it's identifying how to hold yourself accountable and create goals for yourself. Um, and so uh, the one thing that Gary writes at the bottom of page 107 uh, is everyone needs to know their numbers and that it's extremely important. Like, you know, and, and Mary Beth, I would say you're in my life, I would say one of by none the best at knowing all of your numbers. Like if I were to say to you, you know, what was our approved expenses last month or what, what's our paid on volume, what's our whatever, like you're going to know that number. Um, mm -hmm. And it's saying in the book, top CEOs, top business owners know their numbers. Well, can I speak to that a bit? Um, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know if you're doing good or bad. It's just feelings and emotions. Yep. It's not factual data that is going to tell you if it's really working, if that tactic or strategy really solid, um, uh, solidified that listing agreement, um, if that tactic of contacting really generated enough contacts. Yep. So if you're not tracking that stuff, now, I would encourage you, there's a book, and I believe there's also a whole bunch of stuff on YouTube called The Four uh, Disciplines of Execution. Mm -hmm. Okay, Four Disciplines of Execution. It's a, it's a, I think it's by Kavi. And it talks about lead measures and lag measures. Yeah. And so we look at two, there's two different numbers that show up when we're, when we're looking to accomplish something. It is the small incremental eating an elephant one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. And it's the, oh, I see the elephant. The elephant's gone. Yep. And we take that into all aspects of life. I know I've used like the weight loss journey mm -hmm. as a, um, you know, a worldly type of example. And yet we want to lose the 40 pounds. We go, oh, wow, I lost 40 pounds. Oh, wow, I lost five pounds. Oh, wow, I gained 10. And it's really those lead measures, which are calories in, calories out, calories burned, steps taken, that if you were to track that, the results of the lag measure would show up. Yeah. And it's not gonna show up in a day or a week, it's gonna show up in a month. It will gradually show up, but the real difference is not gonna be able to be seen, the evidence won't be seen for a month or so. Yeah. In the real estate world, it's the same thing. And when we talk about, knowing numbers let's just start with at least you should be knowing what the lag numbers are is i want to get to this many listings i i intend on closing this much business i intend on having this much gci come in this year yeah. and then you can then work backwards to to worry about the lead measures mm -hmm. which are what am i doing daily to move towards those lag measures now, some of us are like, I don't, that's another thing to track. I don't even, guys, if I would give you, this is a time in life where you, you do have a little more time to stay structured. Mm -hmm. Start looking at every 30 minutes of your day and jot down, what do you do with those 30 minutes? Yeah. What did you accomplish? What did you, and, and, if, and if it's that you sat down and you read, okay, well then that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just start to find out where you're using that time so that you can make a, a game plan, a playbook for your business. Absolutely, and, and what this book is saying in the MREA is that as you're talking about tracking the numbers, there's specifically eight categories that you should be tracking. Um, and ultimately you should be tracking, uh, or the, the numbers that an MREA agent should always be aware of are your goal numbers and your actual numbers. So you know when you're planning out your year or 12 months out or six months out, whatever it might be, what are your goal numbers and your actual numbers? Um, so the eight categories of a millionaire real estate agent are number one, you want to be tracking your leads generated. Number two. Now, stop for one second. Yep. I want to, without even reading this, I want you to think about it. If you have an issue in the business, if somebody, if one of our agents were to come to us and they're struggling because they haven't had closings without even tracking any of this, what is the one thing that they can do? Lead to ensure that is what is lead generate is, yeah. is pick up that phone right yep. so if we know that that is the one thing exactly eric yeah. eric you can unplug yeah. it if you'd like to join in <laughs> we'd love to hear you uh, but it, it exactly so if you know that that's the answer that the one thing that they could do is lead generate is to make that contact 
then obviously if you track nothing than that, mm -hmm. that would be something that would move the thermostat. And you can't move the thermostat unless you know where the thermostat is starting and you're paying attention to the thermostat. And I'm gonna say something, even on the financial, when we get into the financial aspect of it, it goes to even looking at the bank account daily. Yep. So if we're looking at our calls daily, our contacts daily, then we'll put focus on it and you're wearing the bull t-shirt. So what you focus on? Expands. Okay. Yep. And it's on the back of the shirt, actually, as a matter of fact. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and to your point, though, you know, when we're looking at the eight goal category, figure 13 on page 109, we just talked about the three L's, leads, listings, and leverage. Number one on here is, is leads generated. Number two, you're tracking listings. Number three, contracts written. Four, contracts closed. Five, money. And then six, when we get to the leverage piece, we have people. And then number seven is systems and tools. And number eight is personal education. So, yes. you know, when you're looking at the, your 20%, leads, listings, and leverage, that's essentially the numbers that you're tracking. Um, well, and so, you know, this is a, a great, uh, I'm glad that Eric is on here for this conversation. And Eric Meldkov is our productivity coach for Keller Williams Prosperity in Wayne, New Jersey. And he's been in business quite a amount of years. He and I have been friends for a lot of years. And he's um, with KW, I believe, the last eight years. And so, Eric, when we're talking about tracking numbers and in those categories, keeping track of that knowing that your number one lead generating is what the 80 percent of your business is about what do you do what, how do you suggest agents track that to make it simple and easy so that they'll do it can i share something on my screen for 30 go, seconds go for as long as we don't see other stuff <laughs> it's a pc we're good um so this is our our group's tracking sheet right okay. can you see this Yep. Yes. So what we track is uh, contacts, especially for the new agent. The, the agents who've been doing this 10 years and they're just rocking and rolling. It's not necessarily a contact game on a daily basis, but we track this on a daily basis, our number of contacts. We track the number of appointments we set. The What you see here total is the month so far, on uh, right next to the name, the purple name. And then we track the appointments gone on the listings, contract signed, buyer contract signed, and number of closings. And, the, and, and we were talking about that this morning in our, in our 8, 8 a.m. stand-up call. You know, the, the thing about tracking is really important for many reasons. One of the reasons we do it is, A, to get predictable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if, and we see this all the time. If there's an agent who's calling, making calls, or doing whatever type of contact sport whatever method they use and they're doing it on a regular basis two hours a day two or three hours a day five days a week over the course of three or four or six or nine or 12 months they're going to be able to look back and say wow i have a pipeline of leads coming in mm -hmm. versus the agent who does it once every seven days or twice a month or you know um whatever the case may be so that's one thing is that you, you, you start to see a predictable business for me. You know, the, the other reason, it, yeah, the other reason I'll leave you with this and I'll get off of my screen here. The other reason is, um, is to, it, you start to, you, what you, you, you close the day out saying, okay, this is my business. Anyone who runs a business, you have to be in touch with your business, your inventory, and you're taking a daily inventory of your liabilities and your assets. And you're saying, wow, this is what I did. For us realtors, when our store is open, that means we're, we're communicating with people, you know, uh, especially in the beginning when you're building that foundation. So you, you get to look at the day in review and you say, wow, okay, I made, oh, I made four contacts today. What did I do all day? You know, maybe I was servicing my existing clients. Or, hey, I made 17 contacts. Great. Tomorrow when I wake up, I want to do 18 contacts. So you get to kind of gamify it with yourself and you're only in competition with yourself, but tracking it keeps you tuned in and you want to be tuned into your business because if you're what you focus on. Well, you have to know your numbers, focus on it. Um, so there's something that you said there and I, I just wanted to slow down for a second is one, get predictable. Yep. 
that you, your business, to, to have a predictable business, would take a lot of the fear and the ups and downs and the emotions out of the business. So that's number one. And when I think about that, Eric, I think about as your business grows, put yourself on a salary, but that's for another conversation. Second is the business. You own a business. So I want you to remove yourself from the business, even though you're a single agent right now. Okay. So like, let's remove ourselves from the business for a second. Let's look down. You're the business owner of the business. And I want you to, you're closing your shop on Friday. Are you just closing up and having a great weekend and rolling into the next week? Or are you going to actually look at the books, close out the register and look at your top employee and say, am I keeping this guy? Did he do his work this week? Okay. He's good. He, he, he didn't get a pink slip. So, I mean, do we set those expectations because we are our number one employee, Eric? I often say to people, are, if you worked for you, if you were the owner of the company and you were the employee and you were reviewing your employees' work Before. habits, work schedule, and performance, would you hire or fire yourself? You know, so, and I've asked myself, and to be completely transparent, there are some days where I say, yeah. I'd fire that kid in a minute. There's what some did days. you do? You did nothing. The other thing real quick, you know, track lead generation. I just, uh, you know, I do phone calls. I do outbound, mostly um, strangers. You could certainly do sphere. There's a myriad of different call. But um, uh, Kurt Wubenhorst yesterday mentioned something that really put it home to me. There's also another way of lead generation, which is building a sphere through, or building a recognition and top of mind, putting, getting yourself top of mind by building a consistent um, a video type presence and communicating, connecting with your people on social media. Uh, I don't want to discount that. That's pretty powerful because it, it's going to take time. Different yeah. conversation probably, but it is. And then the last thing I want to say, and then I'm going to shut up is track listings. Why do we track listings before contracts written or before buyers? I don't see really, contracts written are buyers, right? For buyers. Yeah, uh, no, Why contracts track... written are, se are, contracts written are sellers that go under contract as well as buyer contracts that get, con get okay. put together. Um, the reason why we track listings is like a store, it's the inventory. Thank you. When I have a dozen listings, that's my inventory, right? We even call it that in our industry. That's the inventory. And for years, I'd be at dinner at six o'clock on a Friday night with my family and the phone's ringing. And I'm like, oh, this is so annoying. Well, I'm grateful, really, in hindsight. I'm like, wow. Those were the buyer's agents, quote unquote, my employees, whether they worked for my company or another company, calling to set up scheduling to show my listings. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about uh, the, the listings, if you focus on a listing based business is once you get the inventory, yes, other people will help you sell it. But more importantly, you also get the opportunity of leverage. That's why they say uh, leads, listings, leverage. The leverage is in the, those listings. That's so. right. Absolutely. And, and as you, as you yeah. said in the book, if you're going to track two things specifically, you definitely want to track uh, leads generated and, and listings. Those are the and two to, categories. And uh, to, um, Matt, to, just to close, the, there was something that Eric said. If, if any of you have not gone and seen the interview that Julie Costa and I had with Mike Michalowicz, mm -hmm. Profit First, I would encourage you to go back and, and watch that because he talks to what Eric's saying about getting visual, getting with your, in your community, becoming a resource, creating a new sphere almost in this time through using video. So I would really highly encourage going back and watching that. And I'm sure uh, in the agent community, you can go back and watch uh, Kurt. Amazing yeah. stuff's coming out of this time. But guys. Matt, go ahead. You, yeah. I know you want to push us to the next thing. So go ahead, please. Well, I actually, I wanted to take a step back real quick because I, you know, rather than go through each one of them, one through eight, I mean, we definitely can. I think it's just important to know what questions we should be asking for each goal category. And people can sure. kind of, you know, take that as it is. At the bottom of page 109, um, Gary says, uh, you simply have to run down the list of all eight categories and fill in the blanks. So the two questions you should be asking for each category is number one, how many leads must I generate this year, this month, this week, to be on track for my three-year and someday goals? 
And you can do that with any of those. So you could plug in how many listings must that generate, how many contracts written must that generate, how much contracts close or how many contracts close. Um, and then the second question is, how many listings must I take this year, this month, this week? Or that's, yeah, that's the question. So you do that for each one. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you do that for each of the eight categories. Uh, and that's how you're going to be tracking those numbers. So you just plug in the different category and just say, how many leads must I generate this year, this month, this week, uh, to track my three-year goals and Sunday goals. And those are going to yeah. be you know, the important things. Now, in each one of them, there's going to be things you need to track. You know, Eric kind of talked a little bit about the, or a lot about the lead generation uh, aspect. Uh, Gary writes that you'll be working to get a two key conversion rates when you're tracking the lead generation, uh, leads generated. And that's one, the conversion rate for converting calls into buyer appointments. And number two, conversion rate for converting calls into seller appointments. So those are going to be the two main things you'll be tracking with the leads generated. So I would like to um, just fast forward a little bit mm -hmm. to the sixth and the <clears throat> seventh and the eighth goals. The people. So, ones. right. So we, we know leads generated, listings, contracts written, contracts closed, it, money. We yep. know where we can, and, and where can we find those? Where do those live, boys? Where do the actual results live in our world? Both your trends multi-year trends okay so if you are a keller williams agent anywhere you have in your reports tab under your cute little face in your my kw a reports tab that gives you a multi-year trend mm -hmm. and so those are your actual numbers that happened inside your office it's not that i think i did two deals if you did two deals they're going to show up there in your closed contracts so the six, seven, and eight is people systems and personal education mm -hmm. and so how do we make goals around that I think that that is um, pretty important. So if you if you look at page 113, mm -hmm. it gives you a full layout. And I, I would encourage anybody who's building a team or hiring in an assistant or even having a teenage daughter or niece, nephew, help you with some of your technology, I would encourage you to read on this. It says, one, recruiting. What people needs do I have? Who do I need and what do I need them to do? Where will I find them? Two is training. Because now once you get them, and, and in recruiting, I will tell you, you're going to look at Indeed ads, posting on Facebook, uh, your sphere of influence. Ask your court advocates, people who love and know you that would never give somebody, uh, refer you somebody who would hurt your business. Yeah. Some of your best yeah. vendors, your, your affiliates, they know people that are in our world that may fit the need. So that's where you're going to find the recruiting. Once you get them, then you can do a CV process, which is a career visioning process. Yep. And we are willing to help you through that as well. There's some assessments and, and there's a model for that. Two is training. What training needs do I have? Now that I have someone, how and when will I teach them what to do? And that I would I really encourage you if you're hiring anybody, even if you're not with our organization, even if you're not even from our area, please feel free to reach out to Matt or I because we do have the process and the tools and the resources to help you with the 30, 60, 90 of training uh, a new hire into your business. Mm -hmm. The third one is consulting. So now how do I continue this ongoing performance review, encouragement and accountability? Uh, now my people are in the job and they're trained, now what? And that is a uh, twofold. You should be in coaching. You should be accountable to somebody so that you can then lead your people. And not to say you can't learn something from the people that you're leading as well as the people learning something from you. So I that's, would- That's where the 30, 60, 90 comes in. You know, that's I right. think that's where, for who you're hiring, having a 30, 60, 90 day system or plan in place to make sure that you're measuring the success they're having, you know, as you look at number seven, number and, eight systems and tools that they're plugging into that. Yes, correct. And number eight kind of satisfies that as well, because your personal education is extremely important that if you're going to ask somebody to go in a direction that you have a vision for, you should, you should at least give them the tools and support they need to get there. Yeah. It does not mean agent that you are the person who figures out how to run the campaigns or the technology that maybe you're frustrated with or creating ads or marketing pieces. It does not mean you do that. It just means that you better have the tools and systems and resources for the person you just hired in your business so that they are set up for success. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I think the personal education piece also ties back because we're getting to the bottom of the hour. It ties back to bold, you know, and, and coming into May, like we were talking about the personal education piece, I think it, it, it kind of comes full circle. Uh, right now, I think, you know, the mindset piece and the getting the activity steps back in place for as we start coming out of this is going to be critical, you know, in the personal education hey, development. Hey, Eric, are you bold? I am bold. I am bold too, and so is Matt. We are all bold. all bold. What could you say about Bold Pivot and why they should be registered? And how many of your uh, how many of your coaching clients are actually in bold right now? At least eight. I'd have to take a. I haven't. I don't have it right in front of me, but I know the first day we signed up six or seven, awesome. and Joe and I still have to sign up. Of course, we're the last ones to do it, but we're yeah. we're, we're in. I mean, we're we're gonna register probably. We'll register today, um, <laughs> and and so. Bold, uh, my, my, in, in 60 seconds, my bold experience is interesting. And at the first bold, I went to, there he is. The bold, I was going to wear that shirt today. Um, the bold experience I had in my first bold, I've been bold three or four times, three or four, four times. three times at least. Um, the first time I went and I had an attitude because I had already been prospecting. I thought it was a prospecting course. And I'm like, what are they going to teach me? And then I looked at the scripts. I go, these are the same scripts that I've been using for years. So I kind of tuned out, got nothing out of it. It was because of me. Second time I said, I'm going to, I'm going to have an open mind. And I, I still had a tiny bit of attitude, but I got a lot more out of it, got listings. And more importantly, I saw that it wasn't really a prospecting, although they do prospecting and help you there it's more of a mindset thing and it's a life changing event. Mm -hmm. um, the last time also, every time I go to bold, it's better. The reason that I should sign up for bold this time is a few reasons. Number one, it's a $99 advanced layout. If in fact you, you have to lay it out. Um, so it's an investment in your business and it's more often, which I like, I don't like once a week. I like, mm -hmm. I'd rather have a couple days a week and they, and they answered that without, you know, asking me. So they, they did it a couple days a week and it's, so it's shorter, but there's more hours in the week and um, it's life changing. It really is. If you let your, if you have an open mind and you, you know, like a dry sponge and you just open it up and say, you know what, I'm just going to be completely open minded here and I'm going to take it. And Joe Landon's a really good example because he's one of those tough Irish Catholics. You can't tell him anything. That's right. He, but you know, I'm telling you, I came out of this bold, and he's uh, he's a different man. So it's uh, bold well, is amazing. Uh, okay, so bold is from two to four yep. in, on the East Coast, and it's one to three Central, but it's two to four on the East Coast, which makes it even more attractive yep. because you really can get whatever you think you're going, you need to get done with your day. You can get it done in the morning. That's right in the middle. Time of the block day. it, and then two to four is your. So that's number one. Um, Eric, do you think it would be advantageous for them to take bold maybe even with a uh maybe like a command credit what if what if they got like a couple dollars to run command ads if they got themselves into bold what could that do what are you seeing with command ads are you are you seeing leads come back i am i'm still i'm still new at implementing command i know yeah. karen can talk on that and other agents and i and i think look here's the last thing i say about bold you're in business for yourself we are in an industry where, you know, clearly you look at the wubs in, in, in two years, they're going on the third year, they make a, an income that doctors who go to school for eight to 10 years are making. The average physician makes one hundred seventy dollars to $270,000 a year. We're in an industry where you go take 40 or 80 hours, I don't even know how many hours of class, and then you go off and you think you're going to go out and be a realtor and make a million dollars a year invest in your career, invest in your business, invest in yourself so that you can build a foundation now and build out that business. Okay. Karen, um, you got anything to say? I know. Love you guys. Bye, Eric. Yeah, I Bye, do Eric. actually. Thank you. If there is, I'm just going to throw this out there for anyone that's listening right now. If there's somebody in the market center who is struggling with the $99, I want to do it for one person. If there's someone who can't afford it, I'll, I'll pay for it. Because I believe that it is that important in your business for this year. 
Thank you. So awesome. if anyone Thank wants you. to take me up on that, it's out there. Yeah. Take them up on it yeah. and uh, be serious about it because like I said, Matt and I are going to be in it. There's also going to be some extra opportunities to have some coaching. Yep. And I will tell you that hands down, I have been reaching out to some really top, top people in our company. Like Mo Anderson, well, she was the CEO of Keller Williams. I got a response the day I reached out to her. And so I just want you to understand that this company is going to pour out everything they have in this bold pivot. It is going to be the most impactful May you'll ever have in your career. Yep. If you're inside of the group with us. If you're, if, you're, if you're at home watching the movie, we're not going to be able to deliver what happens at the movie theater the same way. So I encourage you to get your popcorn and jump right on in with us. I love it. Yes. And if you guys All have right, we gotta go. Us, yeah. If anybody has any questions on bold, feel free to reach out to myself, Mary Beth, Kieran, um, anyone on our leadership team, or anyone who's taking it before. Uh, we just finished the eight goal category, so that really closed the chapter on the think a million piece. Um, okay. Tomorrow we have our MREI call, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor call. We'll have Kurt, Megan, and Dana on that call. Um, yep. And then. On Monday, we'll be moving into page 119 in the MREA, which is the <clears throat> earn, a earn a million. Chapter. So, uh, my favorite chapter. Yes, yes. So and we it's will... so perfectly put right before bold. We could talk about that, so they could set some maybe even one month goals, yep. and I could back them into the economic model on that. So, um, also yep. at 12 o'clock, I'm getting interviewed by Sean Annan. If some of you want to stay on for that. Mm -hmm. And at two o'clock, we have Jeff Quinton, who is just a brilliant mind, tons of energy, super hardworking. He's a South Jersey realtor, and uh, I'm going to be interviewing him with, with Julie Costa at two o'clock. So tune in for that as well. Awesome. Well, we will see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.